My practice is a continuation of the theme of family, focusing on my mother and father and introducing myself when I was a child. I'm using an existing photo archive to explore my now fading memory and retell the story from my point of view. I have employed various methods to produce my work and many are experimental. I have combined new images with old and used varied ways of blending, colouring and photo montage to encourage the narrative. Each photo in my WIP illustrates differing methods of picture making, including non-camera photography. I've studied various photographers, and in particular those of Finland. Their work introduced me to using transparency and colour together. The juxtaposition of the negative and print and using a texture is something I will explore further in my FMP. Working with these archive photographs, I found it comparable to being there at the sitting. In some cases, like this slide, I have cropped the photo which concentrates on my mother's eyes and mouth. It almost feels like she is about to tell me something. The image possesses a certain hesitation in the frame, a still image about to move. Julie Cockburn says, Working with old photographs is similar to engaging in a dialogue. I am not working on a blank canvas, rather I am entering into a pre-existing conversation that took place between the photographer and the sitter. Annette Kuhn says in her book Family Secrets, perhaps memory offers a constantly changing perspective on the places and times through which we, individually and collectively, have been journeying. Perhaps it is only when we look back we make a certain kind of sense of what we see. This image, inspired by Julie Cockburn's work, photographed in Whitby in the early 1960s, shows my brothers digging in the sand. I intended to hide their faces using red circles. However, doing this, I noticed that they were looking in one direction, so I decided to follow the gaze. Carl Strom's book uses the negative as a narrative to being lost. This slide is based on that concept. The partially concealed red room in the background is where my father stayed after my mother's death. I'm not sure if this image is successful and may be too complex. In Kiske's book, Archive Play, she skillfully uses shapes and lines to create rhythm and flow in the images. Her practice deals with the relationship between fiction and reality. Her use of colour and shapes concentrates the focus on the movement of the figure. I included myself in the project as a six-month-old baby. Not wanting to show my brother's faces, I tried several techniques to hide them, from simply blurring them to using coloured squares. However, I find this method of warping the image more satisfying. This seaside scene I have little recollection of, other than the existence of the photo. Sontag said, instead of just recording reality, photographs have become the norm for the way things appear to us, thereby changing the very idea of reality and of realism. Recently the BBC produced an article about Lethia Casey, an Australian photographer who has created a series called To Dance With Shadows, her interpretation of lockdown. She will cut and scratch her images, producing some haunting and translucent effects. I find the technique fascinating and beautiful to look at. Letters are an essential aspect of my archive, and I intend to use more in later work. I was inspired by many books, mainly David Munn's book, Ken to be Destroyed, and Red-Headed Peckwood to some extent. I find the written word connects the reader directly with the feelings of the writer. Ricard Martinez has been an influence on my work this term, using found images and merging the old with the new. I found this image of myself as a toddler at the beach in Whitby. I decided to blend it onto a contemporary photograph, but leaving it slightly transparent so the new image shows through. Martinez again influenced this slide. However, I decided to use a contemporary background taken on film and combine that with an old picture of my father and siblings. This picture is my interpretation of what could have occurred and told a story that in reality may never have happened. This is the house I lived in for the first four years of my life. 
and this quote by Bacillard influenced the image. Such dreams unsettle our daydreaming, and we reach a point where we begin to doubt that we ever lived where we lived. Our past is situated elsewhere, and both time and place are impregnated with the sense of unreality. This image is influenced by a 1950s poster, I Am Profoundly Disturbed, and actually comes from a British gas advert. It seemed to suit my mood at the time, and I can only liken it to an image from Red-Headed Peckerwood, where Patterson injects humour into what is a portrayal of murder. This photo was born out of experimentation, and initially I hesitated to use it. However, revisiting the image after a few days, I decided it had something. The use of images repeating is seen in many variants, famously Andy Warhol's artwork of Marilyn Monroe. My work in progress is presented in a book format and will grow to form part of my final major project. During this course I have become very aware of the importance of the printed page. I will explore the use of inserts, the type of paper used and how they abound and this will be an essential part of my submission.